Hello everybody, welcome to in-depth look at my Blender add-on for circular arrays. And thanks to the new YouTube chapter system, it can also serve as a form of documentation. First you have to get it somehow. In the description is a link that leads to the Blender market page. Here you can choose how much you are willing to pay. There are no different versions of the add-on. It doesn't matter what price you pick and if you want it for free, there is also a link directly to GitHub. Either way, you should end up with one single Python file, circulararray.py. Now open Blender. I'm working in daily builds of 2.9, but I've tested it also in 2.80 and 83. Navigate to the user preferences to the add-on tab and right on the top hit the install button and find the circular array file you just downloaded. Finally activate the add-on. If you encounter any errors, let me know and I'll try my best. In case that everything went right, there should be three new menus, accessible in object mode. The first is in the bottom of the object menu, second in the right click context menu and the third is in the end panel under item tab. There will also be all the available settings and values. If you run Blender with all the default settings, when you try to use the circular array for the first time, it will not work properly and Blender will complain that there shouldn't be Python scripts in drivers. It's a safety mechanism, so there isn't some malicious function. The add-on isn't in binary, the Python script is a plain text and you are welcome to inspect it. So if you believe me, set Blender to auto-run Python scripts in the user preferences. Be aware though, it will also trust all the other add-ons you will activate from now on. Now, how to use it when it works? The first main usage is for a single object to have a circular symmetry. Just select the object you want to apply it to and hit the Create Array button. Notice that the array used as the axis the center of the object. And put there an empty object so you can change the orientation of the axis without rotating the object itself. Also, it didn't remove anything from the object. You should have only the segment you want to work on. In the end panel are available just the overall angle and the number of copies. If you want to access more advanced options like a merging of vertices, go to the modifier panel, where you can change anything the array modifier offers you. You can also combine it with other modifiers and even change their order whatever you want. Just do not rename it so the add-on won't lose track of which one belongs to it. The add-on creates an array modifier, new drivers and few empty objects. Then tidies everything up in a nice hierarchy. If you want to get rid of it, do not delete any part of it on your own. Let the add-on clean after itself. Select the axis object and in the end panel should be available new button, remove array. Hit that and everything will be ok. The other main usage is when you want to copy one object around another one, like chairs around the table. Just select the object you want to copy and then with shift select the other object. That will act as an axis. Now create the array. It works exactly the same as with only one object selected with all the same options. Only difference is that the axis is now in the other object and it's parented to it. If you want, for some reason, you can even unparent the axis object and put it wherever you want. Even parent it to some other objects. Just one very important note. This add-on creates array modifiers, not instances. The example with chairs around the table would be much better done with instances. For that, I would recommend my other add-on, WonderMesh. Add a ring object from it and use vertex instancing on it. This way, you can instantiate multiple objects and even the whole collection. Just to make sure you know it's a possibility, you can have as much array modifiers on one object as you wish. 
Each one of them will have its own axis object and its own array modifier. You can switch their ordering in the modifier panel at any time, just remember the rule of not renaming them. Also remove them properly to avoid any errors. Let's see what it actually does when you click on the create array button. First it creates three new empty objects, axis, angle and placeholder, and parents them to the active object. Then it adds an array modifier to the selected object with object offset. The offset is controlled with the placeholder empty. The axis object is given some custom properties, angle, count, name of the array modifier and object that is arrayed. The angle object represents the rotation of each instance. It's all done with a driver on the Z rotation value. If we check the actual driver expression, it's a little bit more complicated than it probably has to be. It just divides the angle by the number of copies. In one specific case, when the angle is really close to 360 degrees, it ignores one of the copies, so the first and last aren't in the same place. It doesn't look for exactly 2 pi because of rounding error from converting between radians and degrees. If you want to modify this expression in the script, it's on the line 193. The modifier itself has just one extra simple driver that just reads the count property from the axis object. Finally, the placeholder object has drivers on location and rotation because it has to counteract the transformation of the axis object. It's best seen if the angle is zero. When you move or rotate the axis object, the placeholder doesn't move even though it's parented to the axis object. These drivers use functions in pause, invert position and in throat, invert rotation. Both of these functions are added to the blender via this add-on, so if you have the circle array installed, you can use them however creatively you want, even without using the array itself. The functionality is pretty simple. They took two transformation matrices as input and return vector or Euler rotation that is needed to get from the first matrix to the second one. Basically it gives you the difference of transformations of two objects in world space regardless of hierarchy. Their definition is in the script on lines 277 and 282. As you can see, it can be easily written on just one line directly to the driver expression. I've just defined them for convenience. And that's all it does. As I've said, super simple. Hopefully, it's useful and can save you a bit of time. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Just a reminder, in the description are links to both of the mentioned add-ons. This one, the circle array and the wonder mesh that will provide you with parametric objects. Both links lead to the Blender Market, where you can also find links to GitHub, where they are both available for free. That's it, thank you very much for watching and till the next time, happy blending!